This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hello, feline friends. This is Michelle Fern, your host on Catitude. Now, this show is being recorded mid-June 2020, and let me tell you, this has been quite a year. Whew. Now, Catitude's a show about cats, and I plan to keep it that way. But if you want to know a little bit more about, you know, some of my personal opinions and and still a lot about cats and pets, you can go to my Instagram, which is at Michelle Fern Pet. And speaking of Instagram, that's how I found my guest for today. And let me tell you, she knows everything about cats. So stay tuned. We're going to be right back. She's a purebred, orange and white, Brittany. But when we adopted April, she started scratching like crazy. I said, what you put into a dog is what you get out. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. So we added a huge scoop of Dynavite in her bowl. She looked it clean. She loved it. Her coat is now soft. It's silky. Dynavite is nutrition. You get some Dynavite. How happy your dog will be. A Dynavite. She's little Miss Hollywood. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone. I am beyond thrilled to have my guest for today, who is Tiffany McCullough. She is a veterinary professional that's seen all, done all, has so much experience. Welcome, Tiffany. Thank you so much for having me. I am super excited. You know, I found you on Instagram. I read about you. I read, read about, I read, you know, your information. I thought, oh my gosh, if she comes on Catitude, this will be beyond because you know so much, so much great information. So we'll mention your Instagram at the end, but let's share it right now. And then maybe tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. So I, my name is Tiffany and I have actually been working with animals for over six years. I have a bachelor's degree in business marketing, and I did that for a while. But the corporate life just wasn't for me, and I've always loved cats, always, always loved animals. I actually quit my job to start working with animals, and I got my start in a county shelter, and it just kind of went from there. So, now You've worked in a shelter. You've worked in a vet office as well? Yes, I've worked in a county shelter here in Atlanta. I've worked in a private shelter here in Atlanta, multiple vet clinics. I've done grooming. I have done TNR, which is trap, neuter, return for feral cats, spay and neuter clinics. I mean, nutrition, you name it. I've dabbled in it. (laughs) Well, you know a lot. And we're going to share this later. And everyone listening, you know, there's always a page where you can find out more information about the show on um, go to PetLifeRadio.com, go to Catitude and look for the episode but um tiffany your your instagram for everyone that's listening is tiff talks cats okay so we're gonna have that we'll mention that at the end too because folks if you love cats you're gonna want to follow tiffany because she has a wealth of information that she's constantly sharing so first you have two cats so tell us about your cats i do so i have two cats they're both males my oldest cat, his name is Lenny. He is an all black cat. So Lenny was a, he is a former feral. I got Lenny as a rescue from a shelter here in Atlanta and he was actually scheduled to be euthanized. But I went in, I met him, I fell in love with him, and his craziness. And then we discovered that he had a really terrible wound. He was pretty much kind of split open under his underarm and across his back. So we figured something attacked him outside. Fast forward, make a long story short. After multiple surgeries and me being basically his foster parent, we just fell in love with each other and I've had him ever since. Um, It's going on two years. And then my other cat is Steen, nicknamed after Bruce Springsteen, but he was found in a headlight as a kitten. He was just a few days old, like his eyes weren't even open. Wait, inside a headlight? In a headlight, like kind of nestled. It was a truck. So he was kind of nestled in the corner of the headlight. 
Um, and a lot of times feral mothers or outside cats will put their babies in warm spaces. So you'd be surprised. You can find them in engines or headlights or, or anything like that. So an old coworker of mine, it was her husband's truck. They called me and they told me that they had him. So I immediately took him in, bottle fed him every two to three hours for 24 hours a day. And I've had him ever since. And he will actually be a year next month. So those are my two boys. Well, they're adorable. And I Thank saw, you. I saw you just posted the like little baby pictures of Steen playing yes. with um with Lenny's tail. You know, it's, yes. it's so <laughs> so beyond cute. It's out of all my cats, the only one I have baby pictures because she was born on my doorstep is Molly. And there's a picture yeah. of her climbing like a, um, oh, I have a whole TNR stuff that's gone on. And I have too many cats. I have like five and a visitor. So. Oh, that's great. <laughs> But I know what you mean when we we were having a hurricane and that was right around when Molly was born. She was still a little baby. There were three and Sammy put the cats up inside my husband's Jeep. Yeah. Inside. Yeah. She's so skinny. Yep. She could lay. And so, you know, Tiffany, you made a good point about that cats can hide and be in places, especially places when they're cold weather and mothers hiding their babies and so forth. Because even though kitten season, April, October, it does right. get cool around September, October in some parts of the country. What do you advise people to do? Um, so specifically, if you have seen cats in your area, um, even if it's your neighborhood, like for instance, Steen was found in a parking lot of a car garage, like a workshop. So if you see stray cats around, it's always good just to double check. Check your engine periodically, especially if it's still warm to the touch, like your hood sometimes can feel warm. But definitely if you see cat activity outside in your area, and sometimes they're bold enough to just hang out on top of your car. So it's always important just to periodically check because, I mean, there have been instances that I'm familiar with where a kitten has actually fell out from underneath a vehicle. So just different scenarios like that. You can always just lightly lift your hood or just check under your car if there's cat activity in your area. I've heard about banging on your hood. Does that? Do yeah, you, you can definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes they might panic and kind of freeze and stay in place, but you can definitely bang on your hood. Um, that's always a safe way and a safe route to do it to kind of minimize the contact between you and the cat or the, the babies if there's babies in there. Because you don't want to have anything bad happen. Right. Oh, the, absolutely. I'll turn it up. Okay. Now, you know a lot, a lot about cat nutrition. And, um, yes. The wealth of information on your Instagram. So thanks so much for taking the time to put it Thank out you. there for all us cat people. So <laughs> I was reading different things and I'm lucky that my cats don't have allergies and they're pretty much okay. But I was thinking, you know, with all your knowledge, what would you tell, you know, people listening have, my listeners have cats or want to have cats or, or um, have some have old or young or all kinds of things, all kinds of backgrounds and everything. What is the one thing you would really like people to know about cat nutrition? Kind of pun intended, your pet peeve about cat nutrition that people just don't you know, <laughs> know or not aware of or, or what have you. My biggest pet peeve is that people do not realize or remember that cats are obligate carnivores. And that just basically means that they are true carnivores. They are true meat eaters. There is not that much difference between, you know, a wild cat or a cat in the wild and your house panther. There's not that much difference. So from a nutritional makeup and a chemical makeup, how their digestive systems are designed, their diet needs to be majority meat. So many people ask me if they can put their cat on a vegetarian diet or even a vegan diet, and it really does a disadvantage to the feline. Now, if it's something like a limited ingredient diet, that's totally different. And that's something that you should partner with your vet on. But removing meat from the diet or not having meat as the bulk of the diet can be such a problem in the long run. So that's probably my biggest frustration because people want to give their cat salads every day and nutritionally it's just not sound for them. <laughs> right. I mean, I can understand in a way because I'm vegetarian and I've been vegan at times and I've been doing it yeah. such a long time that it, before they had all this soy. Now there's so much stuff, so it's easy. I'm not ancient, but, you know, I've been around. So I, <laughs> how I feel is one thing. But 
my pets, my fur babies, they need to eat how they need to eat, you know? Yeah. I, yeah, I totally get that. And I've had shows and we've talked about how wild cats and your house cats, there's not a big difference, which for when I first found that out, I thought I was really surprised. And yeah, they like to pray and wild cats pray, house cats pray, uh, mm -hmm. not not the hands pray, you know, stalk and hunt their food. And they some people swear by that's how you should feed your cats. Yes. So for like my boys, when they're eating dry food, they have fun feeders. So I have a couple of different types of fun feeders or activity feeders where essentially they have to work for that kibble or that dry food. And it really helps with stimulation. And sometimes house cats can get bored. So mealtime is a great way to kind of bring out those natural instincts. And it really makes for a happy, healthy cat as well. You can even do something as simple as getting a muffin or a cupcake tin and putting kibble in like every other slot and then feeding your cats that way. Really inexpensive, a cheap, fun way to serve a meal. Without hiding anything? Just put some in one, some in the other? You can do it like that or you can, like the boys have a, it's kind of like a plastic ball that releases food as they swat. They have to swat it and the different amount of force that they use, it releases certain amounts of kibble. You can definitely use hiding toys as well where they have to kind of lift up a little lid, a plastic lid. There's so many different options. YouTube is a great outlet to kind of find some homemade stuff you want to do, especially with COVID. Everyone's kind of home. So it's a great activity to do with your kids as well. That's a great idea. So, okay, so that's your number one pet peeve. Here's something, and you brought this up recently on, um, it was an Instagram, and it made me think, oh, yeah, that's a good point. What do you think of, how can I word this? You know, we give our kitties some people food that we think is okay because it's meat. But it's not really that good for them all the time. Like you brought up cold cuts. So someone's I, eating yeah. a sandwich, they might bring a little piece of, of turkey off or something. Or if they're having dinner, they might take a piece off. But there's hidden dangers in, in those foods for your cat. Right. Yes. Yeah. So I want to preface this by saying, you know, giving your cat a little bit of deli meat as a treat or using it to maybe wrap medication in or, you know, breaking off a piece of your sub sandwich or something like that every once in a while is okay. It's when we use those items, the turkey deli meat, the bologna or whatever you're eating, ham as a meal replacement, because those processed deli meats can have a lot of your salt and sodium nitrates in them. And you can see things like vomiting, diarrhea in cats, and more importantly, dehydration. Felines already don't get enough water intake. So when you supplement their diet in that manner um, long term, you can see kidney issues or urinary issues because of all the sodium. Um, it's hard for their body to process that. But a treat is fine, guys. A treat is fine every now and then. What's one of the other foods that people give their cats that we think it's okay? And I know there's some that are no-nos, you know, the grapes and chocolate and garlic and onions and all those, but just some that we think would be fine, but it's really bad. Anything really citrusy. Cats, you know, anything that's super acidic or citrusy. Um, I actually saw a video one time where this cat was eating a lemon. It was really bizarre because you have to keep in mind their digestive tracts and their whole digestive system from start to finish, from the time they bite into something to the time they fully process it, is designed for, again, meat-based items. So when we start introducing things like asparagus or asparagus or lemons or certain types of fruit, if it's not processed properly for them to be able to break it down, it can cause a blockage or all types of health concerns. I hope a lot of people hear that and really take heed because something like that is super important to know. Yes. You know, just imagine if you fed your cat a little piece of watermelon and your cat didn't digest it, you have a blockage. And if there's a blockage that could cause all kinds of issues and emergency, Absolutely. I mean, just escalate. All right, Tiffany, we've talked about some things not to do. What is one of the most healthiest people treats for your cats that we wouldn't have thought would be a good treat for your cats besides meat and stuff? You know, sometimes I give my boys a little bit of like if I'm eating oatmeal, 
if it's just plain oatmeal with nothing added to it, I'll give them a little bit of oatmeal. Studies have recently shown that a grain-free diet um, or an oat-free diet can be linked to heart disease in cats and also canines. So the grain-free diet was super popular. It's been super popular for a long time. It's actually really hard to find foods with grains in them nowadays for pets, but grains, oats, Faro, anything like that you can sprinkle in or mix into their food is really, really going to be a good option. And I actually like healthy grains over things like corn or potatoes um, because those are going to be really high glycemic items. And keep in mind, to make it easier for people to remember, I always tell them to think about themselves as a human. So high glycemic items kind of contribute to diabetes. It works the same way in felines who have blood sugar problems or diabetic type problems. So grains for sure. I really like for cats, especially with all the new studies coming out with grain-free diets being linked to heart disease. Wow, that is great info. Okay, we're going to take a short break and then I'm going to ask Tiffany one of the most, I guess, frequently asked questions I get emailed and asked about all the time. One of us as cat pet parents, (laughs) just, I don't know, I freak every time I have to do this. So we're going to get some tips for y'all. So we'll be right back. Hey everyone, Michelle Fern here. You know, these last couple of months with the COVID-19 pandemic have been so tough. I am so glad I had Mr. Z with me. So I decided to reward him. I got him a Kong box subscription. Well, we just got our first box and he was right near me when I opened it. So, you know, so I could show him everything inside. Let me tell you, party time in a box for your pooch. The box comes with, first of all, you get two great Kong toys. Kong, you know, those super durable toys that have been around. They've been making them since 1970. They are amazingly durable, great for chewers or bored dogs because you can put the little treats inside the Kong toy and your dog is entertained for hours. So in the Kong box, you get the two great toys, you get three delicious treats and two recipes or tips delivered monthly or every other month. And for all of my listeners, I have a great offer for you. Now, for a limited time, go to kongbox.com slash best bets and get your first box free with your subscription and donate $1 to Best Friends Animal Society to help other dogs in need. So again, just go to kongbox.com slash best bets. Now, you can cancel any time on your subscription for a really small fee, but I don't think you're going to want to cancel. The value is just amazing. So kongbox.com slash best bets and hey mr z says happy chewing let's talk pets let's talk pets on pet life radio pet life radio pet life radio dot com <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. I'm talking to Tiffany. She is a super knowledgeable, knows everything, just so much about cats. So now we talked about nutrition earlier. I Here's the question, Tiffany. What is the best way to cut your cat's nails out getting clawed? So first How and foremost, I want to <laughs> I want to put a little disclaimer out there. When I started working with cats, that is like the first thing that I learned how to do. So I actually cut my boys' nails on my own. And I will also say, if you are having a very difficult time cutting your cat's nails, it is not worth the stress to your cat or to yourself. So take them to the vet. But some things that you can do and things that I really like is the burrito wrap method, where you essentially swaddle your cat, you know, like a baby. And then you're just going to have their little arms extended out, whichever one you're doing. So we'll say the the top arms. And then you can just hold them kind of like you would hold a swaddled newborn and you can trim the nails that way. It's always good if you have someone to help you if maybe you're not that comfortable. And always, always use cat trimmers. I know some people that have tried to use the trimmers for dog's nails, and those are a little bit bigger. So you want to make sure you don't quick them or anything like that. But the swaddle method for sure is a great way. Lenny really, really, really loves canned spray cheese. So that's something that we use as a tr- <laughs> we use that as a tr- <laughs> not the healthiest, but if you're cutting these the nails and he's thing. patient enough, it's good, right? Right. So I <laughs> would just spray a little bit of canned 
spray cheese on like a little plate or paper plate um and he'll go to town and i will just trim i'm pretty fast so i can trim pretty quickly but it's a great distraction and again this is something that we're using from a behavioral standpoint it's not part of its regular diet it's a treat only you can also use things like cream cheese you can use peanut butter this will be a great time to use those bits of deli meat that you have you can also use whipped cream. Some people will feel weird about whipped cream, but if you're using it in an instance like where you need to do a nail trim or you need to administer flea meds or something like that, a little bit of whipped cream as a treat for a situation like that is completely harmless. Those are some great tips. You know, as thinking about it, it seems this is obvious. I should have thought about it, but, and it makes it less traumatic for your kitty because, you know, he's busy getting his little treat and you're snipping away. I have one cat that I could trim the others and he's Dennis is my main coon. He thinks he's a dog. So he's easy. The others, <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to end up with like clawed to pieces. So Charlotte doesn't like me either. So it would have to be my husband would have to, she only likes him. <laughs> that's it. If, uh, got for a me, no. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't know what that's about, but you know, okay. I don't take and it personal. Scratching, yeah. Scratching posts too. like have as many scratching posts as you possibly can in your house. And that will help kind of keep the nails slightly filed, but also keep them off of your furniture when it comes to scratching and nail trims and things like that. People underestimate the power of a scratching post, but they work. They work great. I agree. We have scratching posts all over the place and I think they're great. I just get concerned when sometimes the dew claw nail can get a little long. Yes. So that's yes. the one I really keep an eye on. Absolutely. Like, like Dennis, I did his front limbs and the dew claw. I don't even know if I did the back. Maybe I did the back, but yeah, I don't know if they can get the dew claw when they're doing the scratching posts. It, it depends. Right. On the yeah. So keeping the dew claw trim is is really important as well because sometimes that can get hooked on certain things so yeah that's definitely important and if it gets too long it could actually go into their skin yeah so i've heard about that happening too here's something else i'm, I'm so curious because this can something like this can really give us um as as cat pet parents a lot of help. You've been in, I know, worked in a lot of veterinary situations and, and, you know, like you said, a TNR and vet offices and all that. Yeah. Let's go again with pet peeve. Why not? What's your biggest pet peeve for when people are bringing in their kitties in the office? So when it's something that, oh, if they just avoided this, why don't people know this? What can you share for whatever that is? I think communication is the biggest thing. I think that sometimes you know, we can get distracted. We get on our cell phones. We're not really paying attention. And it would be really beneficial, like at the clinic that I work at now, we have a lot of clients who are cat owners and they will call us ahead of time and say, hey, I'm on the way. And then that kind of allows us to do things like prep a cage in our quiet cat area. And we use things like feel away pheromone, which is a calming pheromone. So definitely communication. I mean, you know, cats are very sensitive. So whereas dogs may come into the vet clinic and say, hey, everybody, I missed you so much. You know, cats, as soon as you try to put them in the carrier, it begins a standoff sometimes. So preparation for sure. And then just communicating with the vet team or even reception like, hey, this is what's going on. My cat seems kind of nervous. I just want to give you guys a heads up. I mean, even if they don't, we're well prepared to deal with it. But if we know ahead of time, it can kind of help us prep for a cat who is super stressed. That's a great tip because I think whenever I've had to take my cat to the vet, like Dennis is easy, but the others are not. So Dennis actually just goes right into his cat holder. We just say, walk in, he walks in. I mean, he's unusual. He's very different. So anyways, but you'd think that, oh, the vet's going to be prepared. Anything that happens, they'll just know. But that's a great tip because if they have a chance to be prepared, how much easier is it for you and your cat and, of course, the vet team? Absolutely. And there's there's tons of different things that you can do to help prepare your cat for a trip to the vet. Nothing too crazy. All very simple things. Covering the carrier with a towel or a blanket, having the music off in the car on the way there, or playing things like, believe it or not, reggae and classical music are great soothing styles of music for both cats and dogs. So reggae it makes more and comfort. classical? Yes. Wow, they're so I, different. They are. But studies have shown that both classical music and reggae music are really, really great kind of soothing tones for 
felines. And actually for my boys, I know this sounds crazy, but I have a playlist on my phone that is a combination of Bob Marley and Mozart for when they have to go anywhere in the car for a car, a car ride. Lenny's more specifically than Steen, but yeah, classical and reggae. <laughs> that That is so interesting. I wouldn't have thought that. That's yep. really good. It worked. Okay. Now, last question. Um, what is the most avoidable injury that you see with cats in the office when you're at work? Absolutely. So the probably the biggest thing that I have seen repeatedly since I've been working with cats are cats who have ingested earrings, like the little tiny studs or just little small earrings in general. And it's just something that we don't think about because, you know, cats, they jump on our nightstands, they get on high surfaces, and we just take our earrings out and leave them. And, you know, cats will, especially if they're babies, like Steen is not even a year yet. So he's still exploring the world through his mouth. So anything that I would leave out, if he's interested in it, it's going straight into the mouth. So things like <laughs> things like earrings, things like if we're working on a project and maybe we have like screws out or nails out or it's not necessarily, excuse me, the taste of something, but cats are very much interested in texture. So if something has an interesting texture for them, they're going to put it in their mouth after, you know, maybe pawing at it. And it takes a second for them to swallow it. And then that can lead to exploratory surgery and then that can get expensive. So I always tell people to treat their cats, you know, unless you have an older cat who's been around the block for a while, treat your cat like a toddler. Like you literally have to toddler proof your house sometimes <laughs> when it comes to cats, um, especially if they're, you know, on the younger side. Oh, I know. And what about vitamins? Like I take vitamin D and it's um, clear and kind of pretty. And I'm always worried if I drop one, I must find it, you mm -hmm. know, because I know digesting vitamins or medication or anything could be toxic yes. to cats. Yes. I actually had a plant that had like little tiny, tiny rocks around the base of it, around the base of the soil, like for decoration. And you know, Steen caught wind of it and was like, oh, what is this? So obviously I had to move that plant because those tiny rocks, I mean, he can ingest those with no problem. So just little things, you know, you have to cat toddler proof your house. <laughs> Tiffany, thank you so much for coming on Catitude. This has been such an informative show, such a wealth of information for all the cat pet parents out there, cat pet parents to be out there that are listening. And your Instagram is also has chock full of information. So where can people find you? People can find me on Instagram at Tiff Talks Cats. I'm there every day. <laughs> but yeah, people can find me on Instagram. This show was one of my favorites. What a great guest. So thank you to Tiffany for coming on Catitude. Thank you. I had a blast. Thanks to my cat crew, Dennis and Charlotte and Molly and Sammy and Jethro and Jazz for uh, teaching me how to be a cat mom. Thanks to everyone listening for making Catitude one of the most popular podcasts out there. And of course, thank you to my producer, Mark Winter, for making me and my guests sound great. Now, keep listening. We have such great stuff coming up. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.